Hi, everybody. I'm John Self. Welcome to Career Live on YouTube. It's great to be with you tonight. Uh, it's been an eventful day. Uh, we had terrific storms last night in Texas. We have become sort of the western edge of Tornado Alley, I think, and so it's not uncommon. I think last week during the, the process, we were also uh, kept hearing tor tornado sirens, and we had a, we had a couple yesterday afternoon. So uh, as we move forward uh, today, you saw some mixed uh, reports. First of all, the uh, the uh, jobs jobless claims, new jobless claims, fell by 16,000. They've been holding pretty low throughout 2022. However, more concerning, but certainly not a definitive, the end of the world is here, uh, the GDP report for the first quarter was down dramatically. It was at a 1% growth. Uh, which is substantially below the fourth quarter growth of 2022. So what does that say? Well, the GDP report basically gives you a snapshot of certain industrial sectors, how they're performing. And while there are some concerning issues, uh, it's important to realize that uh, these, uh, these indicators uh, are not absolutes. Uh, there are some out there that are flashing red that are absolutes, but uh, there's still so much mixed uh, reporting in the in the economy that nobody can say for sure how s soft or how hard the landing will be. Uh, so anyway, we are we are kind of keeping an eye on that. The treasury uh, the treasury uh, curve is still inverted, and that's been a hundred percent guarantee for the last fifty years that there would be a recession. No need to panic. But there is a need to get prepared. I've been saying this for the last six or eight months. If you follow me, you know that that's uh, something that I've been talking about. And so what do I mean by getting prepared? You need to think, what are you going to do? How are you going to respond if uh, you lose your job? Disney this week is tomorrow wrapping up a 10,000 person layoff. Amazon announced uh, today they would be laying off additional people, including closing their Halo uh, division, which was the healthcare, uh, their healthcare uh, division. So uh, I'm not sure if that's healthcare benefits or healthcare delivery, but anyway, they're closing Halo. If you know, send me a, put it in the chat and let me know what that is. Um, it, uh, so that, you know, there's a lot of activity going on. Uh, their hospital systems have uh, done some layoffs and there's, uh, there's going to be more uh, probably uh, in the second and third quarter of this year. So we're still not sure what's going to happen, but you need to be prepared. Find out what do you think? What are you going to do? If you, if you live in a secondary market, you may have a good income. You probably can't replicate that income in that market. So where do you want to move? Who do you want to work for? You don't need to wait until you get the you know, proverbial pink slip to start working through that. Uh, it can be a, it can be a really freeing experience. I've had several clients that said, "Gosh, you know, you convinced me to kind of rethink, re-engineer my career, reverse engineer my career." And when I started doing it, I realized that I had so much I had so much more control than I realized, and that that is true. So, uh, if you have any questions, you can set up a call with me. It's free, no sales, no sales pitch. I'll just answer your questions. Visit johngself.com. Go to the bottom of the home page. There's a little button that said "Talk to John." Click that and set up a Zoom call or a telephone call. Uh, I prefer Zoom calls, but it's you I'm trying to help, so your preference counts. Okay, uh, tonight um, uh, we want to talk a little bit about LinkedIn. Uh, I'm an early adopter on LinkedIn, so full disclosure. I joined LinkedIn. They, they started operations in May 2003, uh, and I joined in January 2004, so about 19 years. I have currently, uh, with followers and contacts, almost 15,000 people following me on, on, on LinkedIn, and 12,000 are connections. Here is a, re, a an emerging complaint with LinkedIn, and it's, you know, it's a reflection of their success. They have more than 740 million people on the platform. Um, um, a large part of those people are in the United States. So people have gotten used to doing the the connection with just clicking buttons and, and connecting with people. That's great, but that's just a foolish exercise. It does you no good. You have to convert those connections to relationships, and most people don't invest the time doing that. So what's happened 
is people don't people who are going to be in the job market aren't really using it as the tool it was designed to be used as but it's being flooded now with people hustling seo sales people from india trying to tell you they know the tricks and trades of youtube uh, Pakistan want to sell you uh, copywriting services. You know, people all over the United States want to sell you insurance. They want to sell you houses in states you don't want to live in. So it's become almost a hustler's platform. Now, I think that this is this is something that is ju it's it's just bound to happen. So let me give you a couple of steps you should take in order to maximize LinkedIn as the tool it was intended to be. First of all. When you, if you have a lot of contacts, how many of them are really active, are you actively engaged with? I have a lot of contacts because I'm in the business of B2C marketing. I'm business to consumers, so I need a lot of uh, um, uh, uh, having uh, some issues. Hold on just a second. It says that we are, had an issue with uh, uh, the YouTube connection off Restream. Uh, but uh, anyway, going back, uh, that's, uh, that may be cleared up now. Um, you need to be very intentional. And if you have a lot of people that you haven't talked to in a, in a period of time, take a weekend and start going through, you know, read the directions on how to update your contacts and start getting rid of people that you don't really have any contact with. Some of these people may have passed on. Some of these people may have retired. You need to get them out of your contacts. Now, if they're friends and you stay connected with them and they follow you, that's fine. But understand this, there's something called the Dunbar Rule. And the Dunbar Rule is that you only can have about 150 contacts that you can effectively develop relationships with. That's all that our brain will allow us to do, okay? So you need to go through and say, if I'm going to start really maximizing the effectiveness of this platform, then I need to have a career plan and I need to have a strategy for where I want to move next and, and what is a logical move next. And uh, so if you're a vice president of operations for a manufacturing company and you really want to move up to the next level of general manager or senior VP in corporate, then you really need to think, okay, where do I want to be? Which companies do I want to work for? Four or five in, the, in each sector and then start targeting people in those companies. Why? Because a lot of the greatest jobs are never listed. They're not posted. Uh, recruiters may have them, but um, you know they are they are never posted. Um, and a lot of corporations now, for their higher level people, are using proactive uh, AI scanning systems to identify contacts people's vi uh, profiles, people who may not even be looking for a job. They scan thousands of profiles in a matter of minutes. They can determine quickly of those profiles which ones are most likely to succeed in the position. They bring those in, automatically generate letters asking if there's any interest, and then they go through, then the, the recruiters start getting involved and start screening uh, interviews. You still, if you get one of those letters, and several people I know have received them recently, you still have to customize your resume for that job. But the point is, the point is you need to have a LinkedIn profile. It needs to be robust, but you also need to have a network that can refer you to job openings that nobody may be aware of. And that happens all the time. If you are determined to just say, well, I don't have to worry. I'll just, if I lose my job, I'll just, I'll just start filing applications online. Great. That's a fool's errand. The odds for every time you, pa you uh, submit online are 150 to 1. And in some cases, they're 400 to 1. And in one case, I saw there had been 2,000 people apply for the job. Now, not all 2,000 were qualified, but just you start off with the odds of 2,000 to 1. That's terrible. So why would you do that? So build a network of people that can help you, not people who want to sell you something, that's, you know, they've got to sell stuff. Nothing happens in this life until somebody sells something. But that, you don't, let, you don't have to let the wheels of commerce glom up your career. And that's what's happening on LinkedIn right now. It's a, getting a little bit congested. Uh, I was with somebody the other night, one of the big Instagram influencers, and she said, you know, there's a, there's a recession. There's more, there's, more pe there's more people out there with different channels of posting and social media interaction and people don't have time to to be as engaged as they once were when all of this started so you have to be very intentional you have to be very specific and you have to focus 
You have to focus uh, on your career goals. Okay, so I hope that helped you a little bit. We have a free, it's going to be free through the weekend called Networking 3.0, and it basically outlines the system I just basically, just briefly touched on. Networking 3.0, if you work in a company where um, they're a little bit draconian, um, you know, first of all, when you when you think you might be lo lo needing to look for a job, never use your company computer and never use your company email. You have no uh, expectation of privacy, the courts have ruled. So stay away from the company stuff. Now, some companies still will track your LinkedIn profile to see what you're doing. You can't stop them from doing that, but they can't stop you either. If they try to fire you for that, well, that would be a really juicy, wrongful termination, more than likely. So... But, but instead of getting into that hassle and fight, there's a system called off-the-grid networking. And basically, LinkedIn can help you do that. So use LinkedIn as a tool and just don't stand in the middle of the freeway and get run over by vendors. So I hope this is helpful information. Um, last week, I fixed, uh, we ran two posts uh, uh, about, uh, last week, it was this week, uh, two posts about, you know, the demand for jobs and how so many people, they, they get laid off, they haven't thought about where they're going to go, they haven't thought about what they were going to do next, and so they get into the online application and they find out they're at the end of the line. And then suddenly, you know, you have this sense that you're in line, you're waiting patiently, and it's like being in the airport, and suddenly these people bypass you, they're, they're, they're ushered through security, and you're sitting there in the hot uh, uh, assembly hall waiting to go to your gate, and somebody else gets VIP treatment. And that's the way you feel sometimes when other people get VIP treatment or supposedly VIP treatment to, for consideration to the job. No, those are people who are introduced into the organization by network contacts that they've developed. It's equity in your career. You need to do this. If you have questions, schedule a call. I'd be happy to, do, to talk you through this. I've spent a career building search firms using relationship networking, and I'm happy to share some of my expertise and uh, some of my uh, experiences and some do's and don'ts. And LinkedIn is a little bit different animal, and there's some do's and don'ts with that, but I can give you some tools to help you maximize your LinkedIn networking and, and, and a way to accelerate your connections. Accelerate your connections with your contacts. Contacts do not refer people to jobs. Why would I, if you, you connected with me and then call, send me a message and say, look, your company has this job, would you recommend me? I don't even know you. Why would I do that? Why would I, why would I put myself at risk, my credibility at risk, for somebody I don't even know? So you, you, that's why it's important to build a relationship. And if you have 5,000 contacts, you can't build a relationship with 5,000 people. You might be able to sell them a book, but you're not going to build a relationship. Okay. Um, let's see. We've had several questions come in today from the earlier uh, lives on LinkedIn, and, uh, and then we had some emails during the day. So I'm going to start off tonight by um, going through a couple of the emails. And if you have your emails, put them in the chat and we'll get to them. If you don't want me to mention who you are or where you're from, just put confidential on it and I won't say anything. Uh, Randy email me at info John G, at johngself.com. That's our email address. What are some best practices to maximize your LinkedIn connections? Well, I was sort of dancing around that. Here's a couple of things we recommend. First of all, limit your connections to the people you're going to target for your career networking to about 150. That's the Dunbar rule. Secondly, when you're making the connections, be sure that you're connecting with people who can help you, not real estate agents in Seattle or people who want to sell you cryptocurrency from uh, from uh, Hong Kong or South Florida, you know, that's craziness. Um, base your connection request on companies that you would like to work for in areas where you would like to work. So that's number one, okay? Excuse me, we have, still have the allergies kicking up today. Um, the second thing you want to do is when you ask somebody to connect with you, just say, you know, I really, uh, really like your part of the country. I'm, yours is one of many companies I admire. Would you mind connecting with me? I'd like to learn more about the organization as time, as time goes by and would happy to do anything I could to share information with you. Uh, so, th so you make it very personal. You never just click the button. I've done it. 
guilty as charged. But if you're really trying to build a robust, uh, engaged network, you always send a personal little note when, it, when you make the connection. Then you need to realize that there's something out there that can help you accelerate your, your relationships, and that's called vi video email. And there are several providers. There's Loom. There's BombBomb. Uh, Bomb. I use SendSpark. Uh, SendSpark has a free version. You don't need the real robust uh, commercial version unless you're in a marketing role. Uh, but you can use the free role, and, and the only difference is you don't get the, well, there's several differences, but the principal, a noticeable difference is you don't get the call to action button. Okay, but that's not what you're using it for. Um, so you, you can, and the neat thing about these programs is that you can, you can embed, embed the GIF into an email so it looks like it's a video and there more, people are more willing to punch that rather than click on a, a blind link. The second thing is that uh, you can embed it, you can also use a link, and it, uh, a separate link, but it works in LinkedIn's InMail. So if somebody wants to connect with you and they meet your criteria and you need to have criteria for the people you're willing to accept connections with and you decide to connect with them then you send them a, a you put do a little video and you can edit it on iMovie or whatever you have on your computer and just say hey thanks for connecting with me here's who I am I'm really committed to sharing and networking so please understand that anything you need or if I can do to help you please let me know I'm happy to respond and then you have to be happy to respond a lot of people are complaining now that they reach out to their contacts and the contacts just ignore them. Well, people are busy. People are really busy. And so what I'm trying to do is go on a crusade to say, hey, everybody, don't have 5,000 connections because you can't, you can't keep up with all that. Get 150 people. At least you can probably have some degree of, uh, of, being, of being concerned about that group of people so that if they contact you, you'll at least respond. That's, the, that's essential to networking. Networking is based on the fact that it's not about you. It's about you helping them. It's about you being a good resource for them. And if you do it that way, you'll get your money back many times over. And not necessarily cash, but your reward back many times over. So I would use video. People are 75% more likely to open an email for, with a video in it or a LinkedIn message with a video in it than they are if it's just a text message. And pe those, that was ver verified again and again during the pandemic when a lot of people, including real estate agents, were forced to, use, uh, to, to work remotely. So those are a couple of ideas on the ways to build up your, your engagement. The other thing there is, you know, in LinkedIn, you have notifications and you keep an eye on that because your, your, your contacts, birthdays, promotions, anniversaries, work anniversaries, special events, they will show up in there when they post something. You need to single them out with a personalized message to say congratulations or happy birthday. Don't use the LinkedIn, you know, um, can message. That is so disrespectful. And, it, and, it, and everybody knows that's all you've done is click. Clicking and sending a can message is not an engagement. Okay. Now I get tons of people contacting me all the time, and there's a whole horde of people, uh, women uh, from the Eastern Europe and, uh, and and the Far East, and they want to connect with you. And then the first thing they want to do is, well, let's go to Telegram and WhatsApp so we can have private conversations. That is a waste of time. Don't even respond. But we still, because I'm in the business of B2B, B2C, we still try to respond. So we do have template response messages. But with the birthdays. Don't click the little message that says, my middle initial is G. I get these messages. Hi, John G. Happy birthday. Well, I know that's a LinkedIn click. You know, okay, great. Send something special. Send a message. Hey, best wishes for a happy birthday and many, many more. You know, just show that you took the time to connect with them. Okay? The next thing I would suggest is that if there's anniversaries, you know, try to, try to you don't want to push too fast. But, you know, share things about yourself or share, you know, ask questions. I'm working on this problem. Have you dealt with this before? Do you mind sharing anything with me on a confidential basis? You gotta, you're going to get turned down. You're going to get ignored. You just have to keep at it. Because the option of not having a network is you apply online and stand in the back of the line with everybody else. So, 
Okay, that's off my rant on LinkedIn today. Um, what are your, here's another question. What are your thoughts on using a functional resume to cover a short tenure? Well, my first response is don't. First of all, recruiters who know anything about anything don't like functional uh, resumes. Now, your, your, your resume writer, your resume guru, who may or may not know what they're talking about, may try to get you to do that as a clever trick. It doesn't work unless the recruiter is an absolute lazy slug or they just don't care or they're blind. You know, we want to see chronological, uh, your chronological history. If you've had a gap, six, eight months, a year, you you know, there are reasons. Things happen. You know, Bum Phillips, the old Houston Oilers coach, once said about NFL coaches, them's that's been fired and them's that's going to be. And, you know, everybody once or twice in their life gets fired. Everybody once or twice in their life gets laid off. And so you may have a gap. But just, just have a good story. Don't wait till you show up at the interview to explain it. But have a decent story to explain what happened. And if there was a, some mess up and you've learned your lesson, be very candid. I've learned my lesson. That'll never happen again. I can assure you of that. So, but don't use a functional resume. Always use a chronological resume. Now, if you are a, uh, if you are, say, a physician or an academic and you're applying for an executive leadership role, do not send a curriculum vitae. That's a way to irritate recruiters faster than anything. We have to be able to track your chronological work progression. You can't do that with curriculum vitaes very well. They're, they're a jumble and a mumble. Curriculum vitaes are about academics. So if you're applying to an academic institution, fine, use a curriculum vitae. But if you're applying for a leadership, executive, or management position, use a resume. Those are not interchangeable terms, so don't do that either. Let people know that you know what you're talking about. Um, all right, let's see. Um, one thing I will say about a functional resume, if you're changing careers, then you know then your your chronological experience chronological experience is going to be important and they'll want to see it at the bottom but really what you're selling on a career change is your skills your knowledge and your ability to adapt so it can be effective in a career change resume but you may still be asked for a chronological uh, history um, I was told confidentially my boss was not happy with me what should I do <laughs> um, I would ask, I would go to the boss and say, you know, several people have said that maybe I'm not doing a good enough job or that you may not be happy with me. And, and they said, well, who said that? Just say, well, I'd rather not say, but it's important to me and I, and I want to come and, 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 and get you to kind of give me some guidance because I, I want to do a better job. And if I'm not living up to your expectations, I really want to make an honest effort to level up my performance. Would you mind meeting with me? And most of the time they will. Now, keep in mind, God put managers on this earth to be risk averse. And a lot of them really hate, <laughs> a lot of them really hate uh, having conflict. So if you're going to want to sit down with them and discuss something that may be a little sensitive, let them know that you're okay, that you're that you, your heart's in the right place and you're not angry and you're not, you know, there's no recriminations because no manager wants to look bad and then get hauled before the HR manager because they may have said something out of school. Don't violate your confidences, but take the information and say, look, I, I, you may not be happy with me right now in my performance. Several people have kind of hinted things and I take this seriously and I want to sit down with you to figure out what I need to do to be sure you're happy with my performance. I think that would be a good good strategy to use. Um, I'm unhappy with my job and it is impacting my home life. May, uh, we may be starting uh, staring down a recession. You, we may be. What should I do and when should I do it? I, I'm not somebody right now who would say, if you've got a job and that job is not immediately in jeopardy, I would not, I would not jump at this point in time because there, there, there's always been in many companies sort of this arcane rule about last in, first out. So unless you feel pressure, unless you know you're going to, you, you're going to get pushed out, I would not 
uh, I would not try to adjust that at this time. Wait a little bit and see what's going to happen with the economy. I think that's the smart move. So just, I know you may be frustrated with your current job and, and, and it may be creating stress at home. Have a plan. Sit down with your spouse, your partner, and say, okay, we're, we've got, I've got an issue here. You're not happy. We don't have good work-life balance. This is not the great time to make a change, but let's plan to move ahead. Okay? Now, sometimes our spouses don't want to move <laughs> because they, they put down roots just like we do, but um, sometimes that's required. So sit down, have that conversation. Now, let's talk about work-life balance. Uh, one of the most misunderstood, and, and, and you ask people to, to define what work-life balance is, it's sort of like asking somebody to tell you what woke is. Um, you know, you get a lot of mumbling, fumbling, and stumbling. I'll leave woke alone, but let's talk about talk about work-life balance. I'm I'm of the gay Gaddis, uh, who was a brilliant advertising executive in Austin, who uh, uh, founded a firm called T3, was a brilliant digital agency. Uh, she's now retired and very active uh, in helping young women advance their careers. Um, gay once uh, said that uh, you know work-life balance is really you're happy at work, you're happy at home. You can't be happy at home, unhappy at home, and happy at work. You can't be unhappy at work, unhappy at work, and happy at home. Th I mean, those things affect each other. That's just the way it is. There are going to be times in your life where your family is going to need you to give them time, give them support, illness, injury, um, you know, uh, you know, relationship issues, kid issues. There are just times that that happens. Hopefully, you're a good performer. Hopefully you have a good relationship with your boss so that you can, uh, you can, um, uh, you know, t tell them, hey, I've got some family issues. I'm still going to get everything done. I need to get done, but I need to have a little flexibility if you don't mind. Uh, there are going to be times when the company is going to ask you for extra time, extra effort. There's a big crunch project, uh, you know, there's a big survey coming. We need to get everything uh, in compliance and everybody's going to be working extra time uh, or, you know, whatever. And you have to tell your family, hey, this is going to be a period where I have to give a little bit more to the business. And so these things should balance out if you're working for a good organization and a good boss. You have to, you really have to be mindful of that. But there, you know, if you're looking for work-life balance for the company to get, let you have more spare, more time off, so you can sp uh, spend time with your friends versus getting the job done, that's not a great way to look at it. And right now, if we're going into a slower economy, when there was an imbalance in the workforce with more jobs than there were people, you could you could probably get away with that and have that conversation and work. But now it's flipped back, so the advantage is with the company. Uh, and so you just need to, I think you need to look at it that way. Uh, if you don't have a boss that's really sympathetic to your point of view, then you're probably working for the wrong boss. And, you know, then it's time to s sort of kick in your strategic plan and look for the next step in your career. Okay. Um, I'm finishing my up my MBA. My college placement office, <laughs> I love this, insisted that I put my education at the top. Okay, I've heard that story many times. When I tried to tell them that it was wrong, they told me I could not come to their career day unless my resume complied with the university's template. What are your thoughts? Just as a little, no, I'm not going to say anything more. I'm not going to say the name of the school because that might give away the person. But it was a well-known school in the New York City area. Um, colleges tend to want to promote their academic programs because they're marketing their degree programs. If they don't have students enrolling, then there are cutbacks and professors get laid off and budgets are cut. So they're always trying to promote their school as being a great place to get an MBA or whatever. You may have to have that resume that they approve of to attend their career festival or fair or whatever you want to call it, but they can't tell you what to do for jobs that you apply for outside of that. Unless this is your first job and you've never had any work experience whatsoever, you never put your academic degrees at the top of the resume. You The, the master's degree or may whatever may be required but with the scanning technology of computers 
you don't even you never should put the MBA after your name because it's a degree, not a credential. But the, to, if it's in your resume, the computer's going to read it. You can always put master's prepared in the first line of your, your customized professional summary. You don't, you don't put it after your name, but you don't, nece you don't necessarily put your degrees at the top of the resume unless you're a brand new baby grad who's never worked a day in their life, okay? So, you, but, they, but, 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 and I have seen some of the dumbest career advice coming from college career counselors. Uh, but, you know, but they're, again, they have a certain perspective, a certain context they're working in. They have certain guidelines that they're, uh, you know, that the schools have established, and they may not be relevant, they may not be accurate, they may certainly aren't up to date, but you have to play the game. But when you start applying for jobs, you don't have to do, you don't have to necessarily uh, put your, you do not put your academic degrees at the top of your resume. They go to the bottom. We had a res uh, link earlier in the week. We had a uh, got a minute. We do a got a minute, sixty minute uh, uh, presentation every morning. It 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 debuts on uh, YouTube uh, the night before uh, because YouTube is our our primary platform for videos, and so it always debuts on YouTube first. That's our that's our prime prefer preferred platform. It then rolls over to our website. And then our website to, uh, distributes it to our email address, our email list, and so that comes back to YouTube as well. Uh, but uh, if you want to subscribe, uh, you can uh, go to our YouTube uh, page at uh, John G. Self at Guiding Your Career, and please subscribe. If uh, there's a, there's over 700 videos there, uh, I have not been really active on YouTube, and I'm getting more active. I'm learning the ways of YouTube. I'm uh, I'm still a neophyte, as you probably can tell, uh, but uh, I, I've spent a lot of time on LinkedIn and other platforms. And so LinkedIn, YouTube is now my uh, mountain to climb. And I've got a great coach, uh, Sean Connell, who's helping me do that. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, his organization, Think Media, great organization. If so, if you're trying to uh, master uh, YouTube. I can highly recommend that organization. They have something called the Video Ranking Academy, and it's a it just really an excellent program. And they have a great support program to help their people succeed. Okay, getting back to this. Um, let's see. Uh, I have a panel interview with eight people. Any suggestions on how I should handle this many people uh, in the process? Okay, really, uh, I'm just a little bit over time, but let me answer this question. Um, when you are going to a panel interview, and you may be three or four people, maybe eight, I've seen 15 or 20, which is ridiculous, but sometimes people play those games because they don't want to tell somebody no. If the table is in a horseshoe shape and people are sitting around the table and, it, and it's open at one end, then use that space like a comedian or a, somebody working the stage in a performance to move inside that area. When somebody starts to ask you a question, move and turn toward them, look them in the eye, nod your head to let them know, I hear what you're saying, I get what you're saying, okay? Smile. When they finish the question, if it's a really good question, don't compliment them if it's just an average, but if it's an interesting question, compliment them because that, that makes them feel good and makes them look good for in front of everybody else. And then uh, what you want to do is start off by answering their question by making eye contact with them and, 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 and smile and, uh, you know, be, be agreeable. And then begin to look to your left and to your right and to, to look, make eye contact with other people at the table. Bring them into your answer. That's really, really important. Now, there's always, not always, but there's sometimes a guy who comes who stayed up all night long trying to come up with the gnarliest, hairiest answer they can have. And it, it could take you, it could be one of those answers that could take 10 minutes to answer. If that happens, don't get trapped into getting into too much detail. Start off by saying, that is a great question. It is a very detailed question, so I congratulate you. I'm going to give you a summary answer because I could take up too much time and I don't want to, I want to be sure everybody has a chance to ask me questions. But let me give you sort of a quick Cliff Notes overview. 
I'm happy to, to spend a few minutes. I, if you don't have any time after that interview, if you have time after that interview, I'm happy to stay here for a few more minutes and answer any, go into greater detail, or you, I'll give you my email and we can follow up. Okay? So make that offer. But don't end up with a 10-minute rambling answer because then you're, somebody else is not going to get to ask their question. And guess what? It's not going to be the toad that asked the question. It's not going to be his problem, fault. It's yours. So don't get trapped. It happens a lot. Don't get trapped. Okay. That was, uh, boy, the time flies fast. I hope that you'll join us next Thursday night at 7 o'clock Central Time uh, for YouTube Live. If this is not, if you have a time that you would prefer to watch this, uh, it's going to be, it'll be on replay. But if you would, there's a time you would prefer to see this live, please let me know. Um, I'm on with another platform at 8 o'clock, but I'm YouTube, as I said, is my preferred platform, and I'm happy to uh, accommodate uh, my YouTube subscribers. So I hope you'll uh, check out. Uh, we just dropped our latest video, and it's about the, the wow factor and the secret for leaders in interviewing and what a lot of people don't do and recruiters want them to do it. So check out that video. It's up live now. It'll be in the web page uh, shortly. It'll be in the morning email and other places. So check it out. I think it's a. I think it has some great information. Anytime you have questions, you can email me at info at johngself.com. You can also um, uh, schedule a call or a Zoom uh, visit. No obligation. No no cost. We also have a lot of free content going on, including our networking course, which is free through the weekend, and uh, uh, also off the uh, off the grid networking. So check those out. I hope to see you next Thursday. Cheers, everybody.